your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along. Read along with me, word for word, verse by verse, at the scripture we will be reading today and considering today. Please read along with me. The Iberian, search the scriptures every day, whether these things be so. Read along with me, because my mouth will go quicker than my brain. Read along with me, okay? Get the scriptures. You know, there are some brethren out there that I really do wish that I could be there physically present with them. Uh, I really do, because, um, you know, there are some brethren out there who just, just need a good old-fashioned hug. <laughs> I mean, they really do. They really do. And, um, you know, being separated by distance that that gets hard that that's one that's a hard thing to deal with when um, you speak with a brother who you love so dearly and you can hear the the anguish and stuff like that and, and when you speak with them and it's like you just want to go you know as a brother you just want to go wrap your it's like dude and, what, you know, one of these days, don't worry, one of these days, we're going up, and, you know, and then all these light afflictions, you know. First John chapter 4, verses 4 on to verse 6. We're going to be touching today on something that, um, the devils do very well. And that is the facade that devils wear. The outward appearance rather than the one who is on the inside. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Okay, And people can fake that outer appearance. We've already talked about that this week with the checklist thing. Okay? People can fake that. People can put on the facade, but it can only go so far. Brethren, this, this is an imperative thing that we as saints need to wrestle with and get a scriptural understanding of it. Now, there are some brethren out there who, who don't struggle with this as some others. That doesn't make one lesser or more great. Nothing like that, okay? For example... For example, I myself, I, I don't fret, man, much. <laughs> I don't. And personally, um, as a saint, um, you know, I could give a rat's rear end what someone else thinks about my physical appearance. Okay? Now, we're, we're going to touch on these things about, well, what, are you saying? Ways? No. Not saying that you should go walking around doing whatever. We're going to address this. But see... The enemy. You have to remember, before we read in 1 John chapter 4, you have to remember Matthew 16, verse 23. You have to remember this. Okay? But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. And in Satan tempting the Lord Jesus Christ, or I will say, the flesh that Jesus Christ is come into, okay? Um, it was all visual. Flesh, the kingdoms, in a moment of time, all this I will give you. Visual stimuli. Visual stimuli visual stimuli and is it any coincidence and we're in first john first john chapter 2 15 and on to 17 love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him Brad, we've talked about, i know we have i know we have but you are being bombarded daily with the visual stimuli visual stimuli Okay? All right? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. 
If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. 1 John chapter 4, verses 4 and verse 6. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The world, for judgment's sake, has been handed over to Satan. Now, in a totality that is not yet, simply because the body of Christ is on this earth. Okay? He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Once we, the body of Christ, be redeemed, taken out of the way at the redemption of the purchased possession, there's going to be no hindrance for Satan and his deception. Okay? There isn't. It's, it's called the time of Jacob's trouble. We have talked about that in length. But nonetheless, today, Satan is being allowed to wreak havoc as means of judgment, but we, the body of Christ, are still on this earth. Okay? Once we get out of here, <laughs> oh boy! But see, we as saints, we have God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit dwelling within us. One God, comprised of spirit, soul, and body. We, we've got that. We have God within us. Greater is He, okay? Uh, wait, 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 was that? Okay? Greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. And who is the little G-God of this world? That be Lucifer, Satan. But he who lives within us is the Father. Okay? All right? They are of the world. Christians. Not all of them, no. There are some saints out there who, for whatever reason, they, they, they want to refer to, to, to whatever that that's that's between you and the lord okay but for the majority christians they are of the world they are of the world okay therefore speak they of the world and the world heareth them we are of god he that knoweth god heareth us he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the lowercase s spirit of truth and the lowercase s, of course, spirit of error. Have you ever noticed how juvenile our enemies are? Have you ever noticed? You know, have you? Like, for example, okay, I've gotten emails. It's like, you need to change your shirt every once in a while, Brad. What, you only got these? It's like, you know, it, you know, like one of the most pettiest juvenile individuals I've unfortunately have ever had the <laughs> privilege to encounter was uh, that, that that block from England. Okay, one of the most juvenile, petty individuals I've ever had the misfortune to meet. Well, gotta say though, uh, that Eric Lionheart, uh, yeah, that guy is also very juvenile. What am I getting at? Okay, what are they get? What am I getting at? For example, uh, Eric Lionheart in a, a comment, which I long got rid of, he, he's one of these guys who likes to do debates, and he's on a live stream or whatever. That's, he's not safe. But he's like, well, you, let's talk about this. <laughs> Dude, you think I'm going to waste my time with a devil like you? <laughs> Are you crazy? Go away. And he's like, then he responded. It's like, well, you're afraid. You know you, you won't do it because you know I'd win. Nah, 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 nah. It's like, Dude. Dude, did you just graduate from kindergarten? Huh? You need, to, you need some milk and cookies? Huh? All right, you need to go play in your playpen? Huh? And that, and see, and that's what the devils do. They get juvenile, okay? They go and resort to the playground tactics, okay? And why are they? Because they are basing everything off of the visual, fleshly, carnal thing like we looked at in Matthew chapter uh, 16 verse 23 Satan is all about the visual the fleshly the carnal carnal fleshly when you read that in 1st Corinthians ye are yet carnal carnal fleshly okay our enemies are like that okay they're petty they're juvenile okay like I said 
You know, it's like, yeah, yeah, I got, um, um, yeah, the same thing. Okay, I, it's like, dude, you're really emailing me because I, I, I have these, what, how old are you? Did you just get out of kindergarten? Did you just get out of your diapers? What in the name of how days is wrong with you? You're a little child. Okay? What? <laughs> what? And see, but see, that's the enemy. Children of the devil. Children of this world. Okay? All right? Go to 1 Samuel. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 16. Okay? Now, we're, we're going to address certain things here, but we, come on, let's do this together, okay? 1 Samuel chapter 16. We're going to be, we're going to be doing some reading here today. All right? We're going to be doing some reading here. That's what we addressed in another video. Those, praise the Lord that we have sight that we can see, both with the physical eye and with the uh, the spirit that the Lord has given us, okay, that we have eyes to see and ears to hear. But like I have mentioned to you before, those who cannot see with the physical eye, they have an entirely different criteria, okay, because they're not going to be influenced by the visual stimuli, which is so pronounced in everything that the devil does, okay, all right? I, I don't wish anyone to be blind. I mean, I can't a little rabbit here. I can't imagine not being able to at least see a sunset or a sunrise. But then again, a saint who has never seen anything on this earth, you know, our minds can't comprehend what await us in heaven when we are with the Lord. The mere sight of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, the mere sight, and we're going to see Him one day, brethren. You know, we are going to see the Lord. The mere sight and the beauty. You know, read the book of Song of Solomon, okay? Describing the absolute beauty of the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. When we behold the beauty of the Lord, it's anything on earth cannot compare to that. You know, what is that? Uh, uh, someone help me in the comment section. Mind hath not perceived for, for the things that the Lord hath prepared for them, for those who love Him. Okay? What await us in eternity with our Lord Jesus Christ, brethren? Our eyes, our minds can't truly... We, we have a morsel. We have a, we have a, we have a little dripping. It's like, here, it's a, tantalize yourself with that. But the totality, the broad spectrum of what await us when we get to see our Father. And see someone who has never seen anything on this earth, and they are happen to be a saint, praise the Lord, what await them? You know, what await them? It's far more beautiful than it's like what we have here today. Because I'll tell you what, I, I'm a sucker for a sunset. And some of the most beautiful sunsets these eyes have ever beheld were those in Shelbina, seeing some of them sunsets in Shelbina, Missouri, some of the most beautiful, in almost 50 years of existence, okay, and I've, I've been to, you know, Florida, okay, and stuff like that, I, you know, that kind of thing, but some of the most beautiful, but see, when we get to be with our Lord, this is nothing, this is nothing, this is nothing. Anyway, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 on verse 13. Okay? And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, <laughs> the Lord, almost dismissive, uh, take an effort with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord, which, you know, he really did, okay? And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will shew thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. 
there's almost a dismissiveness there. It's like the Lord's like, the, oh, okay, here, don't, you just do what I'm telling you, okay? Don't worry about that guy, okay? Don't worry about that. Pay attention to what I'm telling you, okay? And Samuel did that which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Comest thou peaceably? Well, yeah, Samuel, you know, a judge, a prophet of the Lord, you know, comes up all of a sudden. It's like, uh oh. <laughs> you know, hey, good to see you, but there's a reason why you're here. So, okay. And he said, Peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab or Eliab, whatever. I'll be corrected on that as needs be in the future. Eliab and said, Surely the Lord anointed is before him. Wow, look at that. He's got all the markings, you know. Remember about Saul, those of you who know the scriptures, that Saul was also a hint of that visual thing for the children of Israel because what? When you read about uh, King Saul, he was bigger, he was taller, he looked the part. He did. But Saul was kind of crazy. And he, his Adamic nature within him. The people did this. But yet he had the visual thing. Okay? But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, body. Okay? Visage, face. Countenance, body. Okay? Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature. And remember, Saul, one of the things that he was higher, taller than other people. Saul tall was a big guy. <laughs> Saul was a big guy. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh. I'm laughing at me for that one. Saul was a big guy, okay? He met a certain criteria, criteria visually. But we all know what happened to Saul, okay? And Saul did fulfill a certain purpose of the Lord. Okay, yes, he did. All right, but let's keep reading. <laughs> uh, but the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And then there are so many references which we're not going to get into because that's not the point of this video. Like in Jeremiah, you know, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked above all things. Who doth know it? Okay. <laughs> all right. I, the Lord. All right. You know, and if a man trusts in his own heart, he's a fool. And the fool says in his heart, there is no God except himself. Okay. All right. And see, and we're going to touch on this today. Our judgment, even as saints, is flawed. That's why we need a perfect standard to judge upon. Okay? We judge ourselves first. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But see, someone who comes around saying, don't judge me, is hiding something. Okay? And trying to justify their sin. Every, without exception. Without exception. Without exception. Okay? Well, let's continue. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. And Samuel's like, but, but what? He's seen all these visual things, but the criteria is not there yet. Hmm, interesting. Then Jesse made Shama to pass by. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. It's like, okay, I did that. Yeah, look at that. Eliam, man, he, he looked apart, but no, no, no. Lord, that, no. And then Samuel's like, Oy vey. okay. And Samuel said unto Jesse, 
Are here all thy children? Stop. The Lord said that I have chosen someone out of the sons of Jesse. And then uh, Jesse parades his son before his sons before Samuel, and and Samuel's like, but wait a minute, wait, whoa, 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 you told me that one thing, and wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, okay. Put this into a context of today. Someone may, uh, you know, the Lord will say one thing, but then they don't get the visual stimuli, and then what will happen with these Christians? Well, then, uh, the, well, it must be. Uh, the, the, the right, what this isn't the right translation, a better translation would be. You understand? Does that make sense? And he said, Jesse, and he said, There remaineth the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep, the youngest, insignificant. Yea, hath God said. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's, don't, don't worry about him. And Samuel said unto Jesse, But, hey, the Lord said to me, okay, uh, there's a king here. You, you, you go get that guy. <laughs> and Samuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him. Go get him. For we will not sit down till he come hither. The Lord said to me, there's a king here. I don't, he hasn't said anything. He said, you go get that guy. Bring him here. And he sent and brought him. Now, he was ruddy and with all of your beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Ah. Now, notice the visual stimuli that was there within Eliab and the other sons and whatnot, you can, you can derive that from the text. Okay, but they didn't meet the thing of what? David was a man who sought after God's own heart. There are those Christians that want you to believe that David had the heart of God. <laughs> yeah, as, as he murdered Uriah. Yeah, as he slept with Bathsheba. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he had the, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. David sought after, he went after, he did not have the heart of God in him. There, there are Christians today that believe and are taught that. No, David sought after, okay, after, I was a man after God's own heart. He was like, you know, going after it, okay? No, he did not have the heart of God, okay? All right, he didn't, all right? Give me a break. Yeah, as he had Uriah murdered. <laughs> yeah, okay, give me a break. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the capitalist spirit of the Lord came upon David. From that day forward, so Samuel rose up and went to Ramah, or Ramah. Verse 7. The Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. But the Lord seeth not as a man seeth. For the Lord looketh on the outward, for, excuse me, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. John 16, verses 7 on to verse 14. And, and brethren, some of these Christians can be very deceptive. Oh, these Christians can put on a good performance. Theater, man. Thespians. Okay? You don't know what that means, look it up. Thespians, okay? Performers. I mean, I've, I've encountered some of these devils that, you know, it's like, <laughs> dude, you do deserve an Oscar, okay? But, John 16, verses 7 on to verse 14. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the capital C comforter will not come unto you. 
But if I depart, I will send him on to you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. And as it says in Proverbs 14, verse 9, fools who say in their heart there is no God except themselves make a mock at sin, like all the sleazy believers do. Okay? Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. How? Here. Okay? I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Because he was going on to the way of the cross to die. Okay, the law was still binding until the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? All right? All right? There was not like a lull, haul over thing where everything was suspended in the air. With that, that, that's nonsense. The three-year ministry thing, whatever, dude. I'm never going to talk to that guy anyway. But this, like the three-year ministry, that was a dispensation. <laughs> So what? The law was held in limbo? Oh, they have colorful arguments about that. And so while the law and the problem, we are, we're not going to get off on that. That's nonsense. Nonsense. Anyway. Anyway. But I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he... Now stop. Now. Okay? Before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? The law was still binding. Okay? The Lord had not fulfilled it with the sacrifice of himself and the blood on the cross. Okay? At this very moment here when the Lord is speaking, at that time, yes, the Lord could be in a saint uh, uh, under the law, but it was he was not a permanent resident. So when he says, but ye cannot bear them now, because, howbeit when he, the Spirit of Truth, capital S, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me, okay, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you, because the Lord is that spirit, okay? You come to the Lord on his terms, he seals you with himself, okay? All right? And he's talking about the inevitable coming of the Holy Ghost, once saved, always saved, in this dispensation with the thing now. Okay? Point being, a saint can be deceived. Yes, they can. But again, it takes time. It takes time sometimes to discern. And you'll, you'll, you'll come across, like, with, again, with the thing with Les Feldick. Okay? Uh, how many, uh, you know, three, three witnesses. Okay, dear brother from New Jersey, dear, dear brother from North, North Dakota, brother Jeff, dear brother from Ohio. Three witnesses brought up the same dude about the same thing. It's like, okay, I had to mention that guy. You stay away from him. Okay? It's like, sounds good, looks good, but there's something there. There's something there. He is his own standard because he corrects God's word. Get away. Okay? All right? How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is coming? He will guide you into all truth. And like we addressed earlier this week, brethren, okay, just chewing the cabbage again, but it's necessary. There are some brethren out there who really battle with this kind of thing. And we've got we to gotta understand this. Okay. Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23 is describing the atmosphere, the climate before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And today, where evil is good and good is evil, and Christianity... <laughs> give me a break. Okay? It's all... It's all theater. It's all theater. Brethren, people, you need to get this through your head. What you see there isn't real. Even though... It's in the real world. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Uh, there, there is uh, Bruce, that guy, Bruce. Um, 
who I have a lot of respect for. He's, he's got some videos on his channel where he addresses this as well. Uh, but um, we've got to remember this. We have to remember this. Satan gives you an unreal world while using the real world to deceive you. Does that make sense to you? Matthew chapter 23, verses 25 on to verse 28. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye may clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse thou that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! A scribe is someone who messes with the word of God. Okay, scripturally, someone who transcribed or scribed, you know, from uh, to you know make copies of the words and whatnot like that. But for our, for us in instruction and righteousness today, who are the scribes today? Oh, those who work for the Vatican who say, "Yea, hath God said," and come out with another Bible. And of course, the Pharisees. The equivalent today are the Catholics. Tradition, Scripture, Tradition, Scripture. Okay. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Fools make a mock at sin, but with the righteous there is favor. Now, this is not taught. Now, let's be aware of some things, okay? In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're, we'll be in 2 Corinthians towards the end of this video, but in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses uh, 20 and 21. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. The way we serve the Lord reflects Him. We make mistakes. We make mistakes. Okay? We make mistakes. Repent of it. Give it on to the Lord. But don't Stay there, brother. Don't stay there. Okay? Press forward. We make mistakes. Yes, we do. We sin daily. Unless you're a perfect creature. Never mind. <laughs> you can't be perfect down here today. Okay? Even the sleazy believers get that one right. Be sorrowful. Mournful for your sin. More than sorry. Okay? Yes. Yes. But don't stay there. Move forward. Because I personally believe, preach and teach to you, that we can't be hard enough on ourselves about our sin. Amen? But the devils want to keep you chained in it. That's why they always want to like that's like they they like to bring up dirt. It's like dude that that's that's I've been the, the one dear brother from England, you know, who who messed up. Okay, publicly and I did see that one video that you talked about, brother. But he repented of that and what do the devils do? They bring it up and try to keep the keep a brother bound in that. It's like uh, go on. Go on. Okay? We make mistakes. We sin. Okay? Mourn for it. Repent of it. But once it's given to the Lord, press forward. Press forward. Because there is a chastisement. See, chastisement of the Lord is meant to bring about a repentance and the fruit that leadeth unto righteousness. But see, 
when there is oppression. That's meant to beat you down and keep you from moving forward, brother. There are those of you out there who know exactly what I'm talking about. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Okay? The way we reflect, the way we serve Christ reflects him. Now, when we judge on the outward appearance it's not always wise now that does not mean if you're a saint and you are walking around wearing a slayer t-shirt just an example if you don't know who slayer is good but if you're claiming to be a saint and you're walking around with the slayer t-shirt we saints it's like dude dude what are you doing what are you doing Get that off, okay? Get that off. What's wrong with you? If you're a saint and um, of the male persuasion and you, you, you let yourself go and you let the hair get to the collar or something like that just because you're lazy and don't, you know, don't want, not going to pay someone to cut your hair, God forbid, but, you know, just an example. It's like, the brother, you, you need to turn that up, Okay. Because, you know, it's a shame for a long man to have uh, long hair, for a man to have long hair and stuff like that, okay? And also, uh, when you come to Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 5, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 5, just one verse, okay? That idiot uh, cross-dressing Calvinist who's just mocking God, you know? <laughs> and we're going to address this about this these... These wicked, sick people who want to justify sin today. Uh, Deuteronomy 25, uh, verse... Uh, one, oh, one, one moment, one moment. Deuteronomy 22, 5. I don't know why I wrote down 25. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Nowhere in the New Testament is that undone. Nowhere. Okay? Meaning what? It's still binding. Okay? The kids in the hall, Monty Python. Yeah. Lost people entertaining lost people. Funny, huh? Huh? Saturday Night Live, grown men dressing up like women. It's an abomination. It's never been undone. It's not okay. It's not okay. Today, people say evil is good and good is evil with the transgender people wanting to dress like a woman. It's an abomination. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. All that do so are, uh, are abomination unto the Lord thy God. That is nowhere undone in the New Testament, anywhere. Meaning what? That still applies for today. And you see a woman today wearing pants like a man. Now, for example, it's it's uh, right now. It's yeah, I can't see it, but uh, last I checked, it's like eight degrees out there. And a sister, you know, dressing modestly, wearing uh, a skirt or dress. Um, you, you get out there with the naked legs underneath that skirt of theirs. That's cold. Okay, so if a, if a sister wearing a skirt or something like that or a dress going to go put on sausage wrappers underneath there for warmth, okay, but yet they're modestly dressed with the skirt or whatnot. Okay, that, that's a different thing. Okay, all right? But you see women today, dress, you know, women wearing steel toe jack boots, wearing pants like what a man is supposed to wear, that's an abomination. That is an abomination. Okay, you see men... Dressing up as women. Like the cross-dressing Calvinist. It's nowhere undone anywhere in the scripture. 
in the New Testament. That is still binding today. And yet that idiot is justifying that because he's, he says he's a Calvinist and he's elect, so that gives him... He can do that, right? That guy going to hell. And praise you, Lord, for your righteous judgment for so, such a scoundrel as that. Okay? That, see, those are incidences where we as saints are really like, dude, what, you know, to look at a brother or a sister who wears the same garment for several days because, hey, conservative, and hey, I don't smell bad, right? Any of you brethren out there who have a wife, okay, um, when you are wearing clothing for like a couple days and your wife looks at you, it's like, you need to take that off. I can smell it. Okay, babe. <laughs> okay, that's different. All right, that's different. But see, we as saints, when we encompass someone or see a, someone who claims to be a saint and they're wearing a Slayer t-shirt or they're wearing something that's it's like, to, come on. Or, or, or someone who, uh, a woman who's claiming to be a sister and it's like they're wearing these things that uh, show off their body and wearing things that pertain. It's like, sister, what are you doing? What are you doing? Okay? What are you doing? See, there's that difference there. But see, to look at someone and like our enemies do, like I've received emails myself. It's like, how many times, you you know, you only got one shirt or three shirts? It's like, <laughs> you petty, juvenile devil. What's wrong with you? Go drink your milk and cookies, nap time, and go play with your devil friends on the playground. Grow up. Okay? But see, that that is the mentality of those of the world who are influenced by the visual stimuli. And we as saints, okay, so what? You're wearing the same clothes for a couple days. And then you go into some place amongst the lost and they harangue you for it. That could bother you. And I know that bothers saints sometimes. I know. Don't let that be, brother. Don't let that be. You know, don't. Don't. Okay? Because the world judges solely on what they see. And we who are saints, we who have the Lord, okay, we can fall into that trap, but see, the Lord will lead us into all truth. And what is our standard for judging? It's not ourselves. Because John chapter 7, verse 24, judge not according to the appearance, but judge Righteous judgment. Righteous judgment. Here's your righteous judgment, the authorized version. We judge ourselves first. Absolutely, amen, amen, hallelujah. We judge ourselves first. But see, in that judging of ourselves first through Scripture, we judge others by what standard? By the righteous judgment that comes in scripture, rightly divided. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And that scoundrel devil, that cross-dressing Calvinist is the one that comes to my mind. And, and guys like Tom and stuff like these sleazy believers, live streamer guys, will entertain these people and have streams with them. Okay, there was that one Ryan, the Presbyterian guy. <laughs> okay, had the had this stream with this this devil I'm talking about, who I don't want to have named because I don't want to give that devil any uh, anything. Okay, but it's like these these guys they think they're you know dignified. Well, I give a platform. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Because because remember. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Okay? Verses 14 on to verse 18. Okay? See, when these live streaming Christians are being whores and willing to debate with anyone who claims that they are saved and they're not, 
They see, they visually say, well, it's a show of my righteousness. No, it's a shoe that you're a devil. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Okay. And what concord hath Christ with Belial or Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you. And ye shall, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Okay, and then when you encounter these uh, live streaming Christians uh, who generally be of the uh, fake grace uh, community, uh, they entertain all these people in their streams. You're being a bunch of whores. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, pal. Okay? You are. You are. Where's the separation? There isn't. Because you are of your father, the devil. The whore of Babylon. Okay? But 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And this, this is a favorite go-to place to these people. And again, someone who brings up to you about, you know, well, no one can judge me but the Lord. They're hiding something. And they are twisting this. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 5. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. We are ambassadors for Christ, remember. How we serve the Lord reflect Him. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Faithful. Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Who are you proving that to? To the world. Not to you. Okay? Let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. But with me... It is a very small thing that I should be judged of you. Or of man's judgment. Key tie in there. Man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. Now wait a minute. Time out. Time out. Okay. Paul didn't judge his own self. So see, these guys will use this as like, well, I could do whatever I want. That's not what Paul is talking about. Paul didn't judge by his own standard because, as it says in Romans chapter 7, I'm getting a little ahead of my, ourselves here, but in Romans chapter 7, O wretched man that I am, verses 24 and 25, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh of sin. He's not justifying sin. But what he is saying is his judgment, his personal fleshly judgment is inadequate. Okay? We need to judge ourselves upon a standard that is perfect. The authorized version. The scripture. So when Paul says, I judge not mine own self. He's not saying that there is no judgment for himself. He is saying he is not judging himself upon his own standard, but upon the standard that the Lord gives. And see, these wicked, vile, grotesque, disgusting, fake grace, sleazy believists will come to this and say, well, don't judge me. Like that stupid cross-dressing Calvinist. They say, well, only the Lord can judge me. I judge not my own self. Seeking to see, they're hiding something. Okay? Paul is talking about when he says, I judge not my own self. He's not saying that there's no judgment because he examines himself. Or else you have a clear contradiction with 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Clear contradiction. 
Okay? Let's keep reading. For I know nothing by my... He says it right there! Yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judgeth me is the Lord. Hey, how does the Lord judge you? Through Scripture. Through Scripture. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. And how does the Lord judge us today? By that same word, the Scripture. When the Lord comes back with us, at this, his second coming, the sword that he's going to—that's coming out of his mouth—he's going to be speaking his word, judging according to the word that we have in our hands today, the authorized version, people. Okay. Verse five. Therefore, judge nothing before the time. And I've even heard, unfortunately, I watched that disgusting cross-dressing Calvinist before. I have. And I'm ashamed of that. But I, I did. I, I, I gave that imbecile uh, my time. Okay? But, they say, well, see, you can't judge me until the time. What is this time talking about? Because if it is as they were talking about in most of these guys uh, until, you know, the second coming, then, oh, then all of a sudden that means we're not supposed to judge anything, right? No. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. And see, these guys are saying, until the second coming. No, 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 no. As we have already seen in John chapter 16, this is talking about until the Lord come within that person. Until that man be saved. Okay? And then you cross-reference this with Romans chapter 2. It's the pot calling the kettle black. Two lost people judging each other by their own standard, the standard of flesh, the standard of dirt, which is earthly, sensual, devilish. Their standard is flawed. You need until the Lord come and dwell within you on a permanent basis today. You judge according to the standard that He gives you. That's what that's talking about. Okay? Okay? Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, until you're saved. Because when the Lord saves you, He lives in you, He guides you into all truth, onto His perfect standard, the authorized version of the Scripture. You judge yourself according to the perfect word first. Hence, you are able to judge others by the perfect standard that you judge yourself by first. That's what this is talking about. But see, a devil who wants to deceive you and uh, send you to hell... Who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart. You lost people. You fakes. You don't even know your own heart. But see, when the Lord comes in permanently, one thing you lack. Right away, man. Right away. And then shall every man have his praise Verse 5 is not saying don't judge anyone until the second coming. No. You, as a lost individual, your standard of judgment is flawed. Us saints, in and of ourselves, our judgment is flawed. But we have the Lord within us and our standard of judgment is here. The authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? Hence, we judge ourselves according to this standard. Hence, we judge others according to this standard as the Lord that lives within us guides us. And see, these Christians who count on your ignorance of His Word, bank on that. And because majority, especially Christians, are ignorant of the Word of God, they're succeeding. 1 Corinthians... Uh, 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 First Corinthians chapter, and see if it were like these people tell you. 
Well, you can't judge me. Don't judge anyone before the time. Don't judge anyone before the time. Uh, and these guys who usually are against the redemption of the purchased possession, it's like, don't judge anything until the time, until the second coming. So that means I could do whatever I want, get away with all uh, devil men, but justify myself because I'm elect or because I saved myself because of my own belief. The Lord rebuke you. You vile, wretched <laughs> devil. The Lord rebuke you. You can go to hell. But see, if it were the way they, they say, if it were the way they say, what do you do with this? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 and verse 5. What do you do with this, hotshot? And this, and this is, and see, our enemies, our juvenile enemies, Bank upon the ignorance of people's knowledge of Scripture. They're banking on it. Because, well, what is, there's no perfect standard. We got, well, King James, that's, that's the best we got, but it's not perfect. And if you have no perfect standard, then what is your standard? That'll be you, right? And, and, and see, when you see this, it's like plain as the nose on my face, okay? Ray Charles could see this. But see, the people are being destroyed for lack of knowledge. Right now, there is a level of famine in the land. They're not hearing the words of God. They're not even hearing a Bible. And our enemies, who are all fleshly carnal, Playing your strings of um, your emotion and feelings are banking on that and they're succeeding. Because you are your own God. But see, if it is the way these guys say it is, what do you do with this? Dare any of you having a matter against another go to the law before the unjust and not before the Christians? The saints. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world and if the world shall be judged by you are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters present tense they'll argue well that's talking about the great white throne go to hell but yes yes we will judge the world yes but see when they say that to you they're saying that to deflect from we saints judging them according to this. See, that's, that's their trickery. We've got to watch out for that. That's why I say go to hell. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? Saints, we're going to judge angels. Yes, at the great white throne. Yes, But see, when one of these Christians and, and some idiot like that cross-dressing Calvinist will bring this up, it's always to deflect and to justify their satanic behavior and mock God all the way while they're doing it. Okay? Yes, we are fruit inspectors. Only devils who want to hide their sin and justify sin don't want you to do that. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you, no, not one, that shall be able to judge between his brethren? During this time, Paul was encompassing because of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. This dude was having a sexual liaison with his father's wife. Wasn't his mother because I believe the Lord would have said so. But his stepmother. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Disgusting. But verse 2 in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 shows the psyche of what was going on. They were puffed up. Well, we're not judging you. 
That's when you need to come to us. That's when you need to come. And we just are, we looked in Second Corinthians chapter 6. Okay? And see, this is what these whorish live streaming Christians do. They're like, come on in. We'll debate anyone. We're, we're not judging you. We'll, we'll give you a platform so we can have a debate. And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned, that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from you. It's like, we're not judging you. No, no, we're not judging you. Uh, or, you can't judge me until the time. And Paul's like, in, in 1 Corinthians, how do you, you can't get away with, you can't get away from that. You can't. But see, see, there's a famine in the land today. There really is. The fulfillment of Amos 8, uh, what is it, 11 and 12, or 10 and 11, one of the two. Um, the fulfillment of that will be during the time of Jacob's trouble when the body of Christ is not there. Today, this is being fulfilled how? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And they're not hearing the word of God. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Verses 16 under verse 21. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Verse 17. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. What does verse 17 mean? You and I, brethren, cannot live up to the standard that Christ set. You know why? Because Christ never sinned. Christ fulfilled the law perfectly. He never sinned once. That's why the sinful flesh that Jesus Christ is come into was sanctified. Because he never sinned. He didn't even have a sinful thought. Okay, Hence, the flesh was sanctified because the Lord never sinned. Okay? You and I, as saints, we sin. We cannot be sinlessly perfect today. So, when we seek to be as little Christs who do not sin, okay? <laughs> okay? Uh, what does it say? But if we seek to be justified by Christ, Christ is our justification, yes. But see, if we try, you know, if we seek to be sinless, and we ought, we ought to, we ought to strive not to sin. But see, you have to understand, we're going to. But see, the sleazy believers comes around and says, well, you're going to sin, so chuck it away and don't even attempt to. No. 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 We are to strive. Paul says, I, I, I wish you would sin not. You know, be ye angry and sin not. Paul even said that. But see, in Romans chapter 7, he's like, that which I do, I allow not. See, we are to aim for the high calling of Christ. But we also have to recognize that we're going to fail. We're going to fall flat. But see, the mentality of the devils who say, well, we're going to fail, so just just chuck it all away and say, hey, don't worry about it. No. 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 Okay? Christ's standard. Okay? He gave instruction in righteousness. Okay? And you got to remember, he was sent unto no one but to who? The Hebraic Jews. Okay? When he was here at his uh, first coming. Okay? He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture. Okay, and here we are in today's dispensation. Okay? But he was what? What in Galatians? Um, uh, where was that? Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 5. 
Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Christ never sinned. He kept the law perfectly. You and I cannot attain to that standard. We can't. That's why Paul is the example for the saints, the church of the living God today, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Does that mean that we shouldn't try for instruction and in righteousness to live up to some of what Christ said? No, of course not. But see, when you don't rightly divide and you try to make your doctrinal standard the Sermon on the Mount, Verse 18 in Galatians chapter 2. For if I build again the things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. And as it says in James, if you mess up at one point in the law, you have broken the whole thing. If you go back to your vomit, for I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead. Then. And then we already read Romans chapter 7, verses 24 on to verse 25. But see, the devil, the devils, when we mess up, can oppress you and try to keep you here, to keep reliving, opening up that scab. Yes, when we sin, we mess up, we're, we're devastated, we're broken even more so, yes. It's like, Lord, oh, wretched man, I can't stop this. But see, a devil wants to keep you there. In Ezekiel chapter 13, in Ezekiel chapter 13, Ezekiel chapter 13. Good example of this. Verses 17 on to verse 23. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the women that sow pillows to all armholes, and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. Will ye hunt the souls of my people? And will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? Don't worry about it. Just, just believe and receive. Don't worry about it. You can't live up to the standard anyway, so don't worry about it. So that means that we shouldn't even strive at all. Uh -uh. And will ye pollute me among my people for handful fulls of barley and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die and to save the souls alive that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lies oppress a saint who messed up who messed up who is repentant who is grieved who is sorry for their sin and seeks to better, be, uh, be better, to continue walking, to strive for that reach, for that high calling, to not stay here. Putting those things behind and press forward. Okay? Press forward, brother. Deal with it. Talk about it with the Lord. Spend the day with you and the Lord. Amen. But devils want you to stay there. And also to justify you staying there. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, I am, Behold, I am against your pillows. 
soft pillows. Well, no, scripturally, remember, pillows, uh, what was it, uh, Joseph used a rock as his pillow. Good for the neck. Uh, okay. We're with ye... Therefore, wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly, and I will tear them from your arms, and will let the souls go, even the souls ye hunt to make them fly. Your kerchiefs also will I tear and deliver my people out of your hand, and they shall no more, and they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted, and ye shall know that I am the Lord, because with lies. Ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad. And strengthen the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Just believe and receive. You shame on you. You're talking about coming to the Lord broken and contrite and in fear of Him calling upon His name. Shame on you. But hey, just believe and receive. Don't worry about it. You see? By promising Him life. Oh, oh, oh repentance, that's a work. Calling on the name of the Lord, that's a work. Don't, don't worry, just believe and receive. Skipping over requirements. Yeah, 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 yeah. Therefore, ye shall see no more vanity, nor divine divinations. For I will deliver my people out of your hand, and ye shall know that I am Lord. Go to James chapter 2. This was the catalyst for today. Now, the thing about James. James 2, brethren. Brethren. Okay. James 2. The book of James is written for the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Saints get messed up with James too. James was not preaching works, faith and works, because he's pre this is for specifically doctrinally for the Hebraic Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Yes, there are things that cross dispensational lines for us today, things for our instruction and in righteousness, which we are going to look at in the book of James right now, because we're going to read James 2, verses 1 on to verse 9. Okay? But people, saints today, get really messed up with James 2. There's instruction and in righteousness there. But, hey, fake gracer, does our faith save us today by grace through faith? Come on, this is right up your alley. And James says, can, that, can his faith save him? It's like, what is it? Uh, uh, verse 14 and um, uh, what was that? Verse uh, 24, 14 and 24 in James 2. How, how do you reconcile that? How do you reconcile that? Huh? How do you reconcile that? You have to rightly divide it and realize that it's written for another dispensation. Which sleazy believists who say that they rightly divide the word of truth, they don't. Uh, claim to do, but they don't. Okay? But James 2, this is 1 on verse 9. My brethren. Now, you got to remember. Book of James is written for who? James, the servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ and the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. Okay? Obvious. During the time of Jacob's trouble, blue in the face, eternal security is only there for the 144,000 Jews. Hebraic Jews. Okay? Um, Eternal security is not there for everyone else. Okay? Alright? So, my brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Visual stimuli. 
For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing. And you devils out there who have twisted this, I've, I, and I've encountered this. It's like, see, gay is in Scripture. Yeah, that does not mean sodomite. Gay means happy. And you, you sodomites, you think you're happy. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. This is not a reference unto Sodom. Okay? And ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool? Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? Well, there plays 1 Corinthians chapter 1, of course. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Twenty-six, under verse thirty-one. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. The brother, you know, who who, who wears the same outfit every day for a while until it can walk by itself. Okay, okay, it looks a little gruff doesn't live up to the world's fleshly standards, okay? God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. Look at those verses, okay? The foolish things of the world are saints, to confound the wise. The weak things of the world. To confound the mighty. No, no trust in ourselves. Okay. You read for uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. We have the sentence of death in ourselves. That we don't trust in ourselves. Okay. And base things of the world. And the things which are despised. Not many noble. I am a Calvinist. I am elect. I saved myself because I just believed and received. Mm -hmm. And the base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to, thing, to, bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. These sleazy believers, these Calvinists, these Catholics, they all have the one thing in common. And what is that? What is that? We already looked at it. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Verse 23 again. Okay. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but that, but those that be of men. Flesh, carnal, carne. Okay. Verse 29 in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. That no flesh should glory in his presence. Now what does Christianity do? They glory in flesh. Because Christianity is carnal. Period. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Go back to James chapter 2, verse 6. Uh, verse 5, excuse me, verse 5. Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which hath which he hath promised to them that love him. And remember, during the time of Jacob's trouble, there's going to be the mark of the beast, where no man may be may be able to buy or sell without that mark. So if you don't have the mark, how are you going to eat? How are you going to get by? Okay, by the Lord's provision. 
Gold and silver will mean nothing during the time of Jacob's trouble because Satan is going to establish the mark of the beast. Okay? So, during the time of Jacob's trouble, rich men who have taken the mark of the beast, okay, get it? Get it! But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? They don't have the mark. Hmm? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called? You receive that mark of the beast during the time of Jacob's trouble, dear Christian. You're going to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. The sleazy believers will tell you it's by grace through faith during the time of Jacob's trouble. It is not. You take that mark of the beast, your ticket is punched, you're going to hell. Period. Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin, and are convinced of the law as transgressors. Sometimes I wish I were deaf and blind. That way your criteria would be more on what the Lord says rather than the visual stimuli, right? Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And then we will be done. I know this is, you know, again, a chewing the cabbage thing. I get that. But you know, brethren, you know, brethren, when you, when you talk to sweetheart brethren, who are in pain, who are just sorrowful. And we we got to remember these things. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 under verse 12. And this is the thing, you know, when these Christians, when you get emails, it's like, Brad, change your shirt. It's like, grow up. And get the pacifier out of your mouth, little boy. This is light affliction. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, our body, this mortal coil, we have a building of God, our spiritual body, our new body, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. Amen. Brother Jeff, no more shoulder. Brother Alexander, no more hip problems. Myself, no more heart problems. My wife, no more, you know, no more of her problems. You know, our, our spiritual body, that body that, you know, can appear like that, you know, where you can eat to your full and not have to gain an inch or anything like that, okay? We eventually, there's going to be no pain. There's going to be no suffering, okay? It's going to, we still got a while to go before that comes, okay? I want to be absent from the body, we're going to read it, okay, yes. But until all sin is gone, we got a while before that happens. Okay? Time takes trouble, the kingdom of heaven. And then after that, great white throne. Then the devil and sin is finally cast away. And then let's, let's do it. Okay? For in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. It's like when I was walking the other day, um, you know, um, it's all snowy and they don't do the sidewalks. So I walk on the road. And while I was walking, and I walk facing traffic because I want to see what's going to hit me, you know. And while I was walking, a car swerved at me. And I'm like, yeah, come on, pal. And I just smiled. It's like, dude, you hit me, I'm going home. <laughs> okay? <laughs> it's like, okay? But anyway, let's continue. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan in this flesh, this sin, sagging sin suit, okay? Being burdened, 
Not that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life to get that new body. Hmm. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the capital S spirit. Hold your place there. Let's go to the obvious. The earnest of the spirit. Okay, what is that talking about? Simple. Ephesians chapter 1. Okay, verses 13 and 14. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that holy capitalist spirit of promise, and the Lord is that spirit, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. Once saved, always saved. You come to the Lord on his terms. You're sealed with the Lord himself. Okay? Go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, okay? Now he hath wrought, now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. As it says in 1 John chapter 2, ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. That anointing that, uh, remain, uh, that remaineth in you abideth, meaning the Holy Ghost. Okay? He who is born of God, born again, the Lord lives within you. He's not going to guide you onto any sin. Okay? We sin. But the Lord within you is not going to justify anything, any sin that you do. Doesn't work that way. Unlike what some cross-dressing Calvinists will have you believe, or these stupid, wicked, sleazy believers will have you to believe also. Okay? Even some de uh, Baptists out there. Okay? Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. I, you know, I wanted to get out of here yesterday. Saint, so did you. So did you. But see, we're here. Hence, for we walk by faith. Not by sight. In Christianity, dude, it's all about sight. Why? Because Christianity is of their father, the devil. Look, brother, I don't give a rap what Christianity one time may have been. Is it there now? No. And it will never be again, ever. So drop it. Drop it. We walk by faith, not by sight. I don't care now. Okay, like I said, you know, uh, this is going on. Because like I've said, I've had these petty devils. It's like, why are you always wearing the same shirt? It's like, are you, are you serious? Little child, little baby boy. Huh? You go have your milk and cookies and suck your thumb. Huh? Little baby boy. Grow up, child. But it's like, you know, my wife was like, Brad, change. I can smell you from here. Okay, babe. Okay. Okay? But, you know, you don't judge on that criteria. Like we've already addressed. If you're a saint and you're walking around in a Slayer shirt, if you're a sister and you're, you're just like, why are you wearing pants like that? Why, why, why are you dressed like that? Okay, that's a different thing. But, and then, you know, to judge a brother or a sister because they're a little unkempt. Does that mean that we walk around totally unkempt? No. But, I mean, it's like, okay, if, you got, if you're a little scraggly, if you didn't brush your teeth, if, you, if the razor broke, or if you forgot to brush your hair, or, or there's a stain on your shirt and you wore it the last time, so what? So what? I never fretted man like that. Neither should you. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Amen, amen. Amen. Wherefore we labor. Back to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to verse 10. 
For by grace, unmerited favor, the better, blessing the lesser, are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not because you're elect, a black Hebrew Israelite, or because you save yourself by your own belief. Okay. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them as ambassadors of Christ. Verse 9 in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we saved people must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ, the redemption of the purchased possession, the come up hither, the judgment seat of Christ, you do not see judgment seat of Christ mentioned anywhere outside of the Pauline epistles. Show it to me. You don't. The judgment seat of Christ is for the church. The church of the living God. Us saints. Okay? That's what that is about. Alright? And the church of the living God... Um, uh, but if I tarry long, uh, 1 Timothy 3, 15, But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God. We are of God's house, not a building. Okay? Which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Okay? All right? The judgment seat of Christ is for saved people. After that... It's the great white throne. Okay? Not everyone is going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. There are Christians out there who want you to believe that the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne are the same thing. Yeah. Sure. Right. Uh huh. And the New Testament began with the birth of uh, Christ or at the uh, Council of Nicaea. The Lord rebuke you. They're two different things. The judgment seat is for us saved people. It can be for you. But you got to go to the Lord on his terms. For we saved people must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That everyone may receive of the things done in his body according that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Paul never preached the fear of the Lord. <sighs> Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. And those who judge themselves by themselves are what? Not wise. Don't let these devils get to you. I, I know that's easier said than done. I know. And yes. I will, I will freely admit this. Personally, I, that, that, that thing doesn't get to me too much. It, it doesn't. Okay? If, you know, if, you know, my outer garment needs, you know, my wife. You know, she's like, Brad, okay, babe. Okay? Or if a brother, it's like, you know, you hug a brother, it's like, a, Brad, how are you been wearing that? Okay? That... Or if, you know, you're walking around and people look at you because you're, you're, you know, the Sunday best thing. Okay? Think about that. Okay? Like with these Christians, it's like they put on their Sunday best. Got to put on a suit and tie. Well, how are you going to look before the Lord naked? Are you going to be actually physically naked? But uh, the Lord doesn't look, see as a man see. We already covered that. It's like these people, it's like you got to wear your best going to church. But all things are naked before the eyes of whom we have to do. 
And the Lord doesn't look on the outside, but he looks on the heart. So when you get these Christians that go to the church building putting on their, their best, you know, like the Ruckman, it's like, so we don't look like nuts to people, so you wear the suit and tie? Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. And brethren, there is a dear brother of ours who needs our prayers. Um, please keep him in our prayer, in your prayers, who, um, who, who struggles with this. Pray for him. Also pray for his sister. Who needs you? Who needs the Lord? Please pray for her. Pray for one another. Pray for one another. And don't forget one another. You know, there are those of you like, um, uh, there are two Brother Davids. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, um, we're kept busy. If I don't personally get the chance to converse with you, dear brother, dear sister, don't think that you are ever out of our hearts or prayers. Okay? Don't ever think that. Never forgotten. Okay? But that is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. I hope this helps. I, I, I do. I do. Because um, this can be a snag for some of us. And it needn't be. So I'm going to get this one uploaded. We love you. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you in the next video, okay? Bye-bye.